listed in this box. And I had um, a lot of pleasure to work with experimentalists um, within U of T um, as well as outside U of T. Some of works are not related to Gitai, but um, it was uh, going through the summer places in Japan and thinking about spin-off coupling and um, how the correlations combined effect appears. And that's about uh, 10 years ago. So I listed some of those uh, who were kind of motivate me to start thinking about this area. Um, Natasha and I are writing uh, some review articles. Hopefully we'll finish um, in a month, <laughs> no push, <laughs> but uh, we will hopefully have some review article on this uh, part as well. Okay, so let's begin. Um, something that we all very familiar with. I'll be talking about the spin model. I just want to remind you that the uh, basically a magnetism is nothing but the uh, quantum physics and the electron-electron interactions. So, and we'll be talking mainly on the uh, honeycomb lattice. So we all know that uh, you go through the hopping process and the exchange, and that will give us exchange interaction. We open call the J, and we end up with Heisenberg interactions, which um, SI, is that, SI dot SJ. So those spin interactions, we often think about just a single orbital and no spin orbit coupling, and that's because they are dominant in the most uh, material. But in certain situations, that may not be the case. Um, um, so you can see that uh, it's actually a SU2, and that's coming from the Hubbard interaction, which has a very high symmetry. And then we have single orbital and no spin orbit coupling. Um, when orbital angular momentum as well as spins are not conserved uh, due to the spin orbit coupling, of course, we have this general form of the Hamiltonian, which are now written in terms of three by three matrix. And symmetry of the model will constrain uh, the matrix element because the hoping is um, some of them are allowed by the symmetry of the lattice. And that one is going to uh, restrict the um, which part of matrix element are finite and some are zero. Of course, they are not sufficient to understand one, why one term is larger over the, the other. Um, so we'll have to go through some microscopics to tell uh, in under what condition we will have certain interaction become dominant over the others. So that's why we are working on this uh, microscopic theory. Okay, uh, so before I go into the microscopic theory of the Kitaev, uh, I haven't even got into you the uh, my outline. In fact, these are all still on the introduction. I just want to remind you about the Heisenberg model. Um, if you open up the textbook, for example, uh, you can in fact, think about the spin half Heisenberg model in terms of the bone singlet. So here uh, you can see that Ij, which is defined with a singlet, and I use this uh, um, bond uh, with the blue uh, recovering the singlet. And uh, one can introduce the bond operator, uh, which I'll call the Qij here. Um, and you write down the SISJ Heisenberg interaction in terms of the half minus um, two of the SI dot SJ. And that will be my bond operator here. And one can show that if you, you know, operate the QIJ on an IJ bond here, and that will generate um, that the some constant eigenvalues here with IJ. So that means it's an eigen operator for the bond singlet. And uh, if you have two bond here, um, which is the JK with the IJ and KL, in fact, they will switch the bond. So that's exactly this uh, resonating between two so-called rumor diagrams. Uh, Q2I acting on this two bond product of the two bond singlets will generate the, the other two bond singlets. So that's nice uh, because one can work it out the ground state of this uh, resonant balance model. And uh, if I have a full side problem, one can show that in fact, my ground state of this uh, bond singlet is uh, actually a ground state of this uh, Heisenberg model. One can show that the uh, in fact that it's um, um, it's a um, well combination of the two possible singlets, and uh, therefore the local uh, order parameter here is a zero. On the other hand, one do develop the anti ferro correlations by looking at the SI S two and then ZZ correlator. One can show that this is exactly a minus one over six. Okay, so that's nice, but uh, one can also extend to the bigger size. Um, you can work on the A side and so on and so forth, and then uh, extend to a bigger size. This RVV with the different lengths of the rumor diagram start to show up. And the probability of finding these longer ones, in fact, one can show it's uh, smaller than the shorter ones and so on. One can cover entire lattice with the bone singlet. However, and the degeneracy of this type of the, um, the linear combination of bone singlets, in fact, grows to the two to the n. So it's a thermodynamic uh, growth. 
Um, so that's uh, basically, as you know well, the Phil Anderson's uh, proposal of the LVB in the dimension higher than the one. So it's a two-dimensional LVB uh, was uh, based on these ideas. But unfortunately, if you have a scale lattice, uh, in the thermodynamic limits, uh, in fact, that the spontaneous symmetry breaking occurs, and this is why we know that the magnetic ordering appears. In other words, anti-ferromagnetic ordering, it's a SI, is the expectation value will take this uh, a form of the uh, sublattice uh, magnetic order. Okay, good. So, um, so since then, um, this is back to 1973, um, the quantum spin liquid, uh, again, you know, higher dimensions to uh, the in particular uh, has been a, a lot of uh, uh, interest and uh, many of us has been working for uh, finding both theoretically as well as experimentally and the real materials etc um so the idea or concept has developed drastically as well because uh, it's not only a disorder state we have learned <laughs> that in fact that they will have uh, well, actually, we knew that there has been fractionalized excitations, but concept of long-range entanglement <laughs> is rather uh, rather new. Uh, it's a kind of modern concept. Okay, so as we discussed that the um, scale lattice uh, is, uh, in fact, uh, has anti-ferromagnetic order, but uh, because of that idea in the back uh, and still alive is that the uh, you can use the geometrical frustration to avoid the magnetic ordering. And that's why we study like a triangle lattice or Gagome lattice or tetrahedrons and many of those designers, many of those uh, frustrations avoiding the magnetic order set by the Heisenberg model. Okay, and those frosty magnets uh, insulators, uh, they come with many shapes on characters and, and there are many of those uh, researches are going on. And hopefully that, uh, uh, and I don't know if you have, a, I don't think we have one, but uh, you can probably hear from many others about this uh, geometrically frustrated magnets. All right, um, a new angle to the frustration uh, you can think about is that instead of having, uh, because those uh, geometrical frustrations are based on the idea that the Heisenberg interaction is the one interaction that we are dealing with, on the other hand, one can also think about the frustration coming from a uh, different type of the interactions rather than Heisenberg. So in other words, if you have a, in the interaction, which depends on the bond, like here, a honeycomb lattice has X bond, Y bond, and Z bond. Uh, these are colored by the red, blue, and green. And if each of the bond has a different interactions and uh, spins is, uh, doesn't know where to point, and that will in fact generate the frustrations. And this is another way to get a, a quantum spin like it. And that's precisely the idea from the Kitaev. So Kitaev interaction um, is uh, nothing but uh, bone dependent Ising interactions with the strength of the K here, uh, S gamma gamma, gamma depends on the bone. So X, Y, Z here, Z is the Z, Z, and X is the X, X, and Y bond has the Y, Y. All right, and the uh, graphical representation of Hamiltonian, these are all from the um, Kitaev's original paper. Uh, you can you know, check it out uh, with his original paper, which is really a nice one of the beautiful paper um, that I would strongly recommend. So you can write down the spin here in terms of the two Majoranas uh, with the B gamma and C bosa Majoranas. Uh, and uh, of course, once you write this in terms of spin into the two Majoranas, the Hilbert space has enlarged. And therefore, one has to bring back to the physical Hilbert space, which are written in terms of B here. Um, B is going to be a product of three Majoranas, so B, X, B, Y, B, Z with a C Majoranas. And if you propose this condition to a, you know, the, the, the state and back to its own state, that's the bring back to the physical space. So that's basically a gauge field that comes in. And once you do that, Hamiltonian can be written in terms of this uh, C Majoranus with a product of this UIJ, and UIJ is a product of this B Majoranus. And one can show that the ground state, which a product of UIJ going along this bond, and often these are called the flux uh, operator, WP. Uh, one can show that the ground state is having all WP being a one. And once that become number become a constant here, AJ, this one become a constant, we end up with a bi-quadratic Hamiltonian with a C there, CC there. And therefore one can solve it exactly. And that's what Kitaev did. And the ground state is known to be a Kitaev spin liquid and emergent particle becomes Majorana fermion, which is a C. And then the Vison or called the WP here, uh, G2 quantum vortex here, which will take either plus one or minus one. 
Okay, so far so good. Um, then smoking gun experiment uh, signature will be also from the GitHub's original paper here uh, is going to be um, the half integer quantized thermal hole conductivities. And that one he has shown that using the time reversal broken symmetry here, uh, time reversal broken symmetry Hamiltonian here, which is HX, HY, HZ uh, um, with uh, Sigma is basically S, uh, X, S, Y, S, Z. I just want to point it out here because uh, this one is not a Zeman field, but you are breaking them uh, by putting time reversal uh, breaking term here. So that's uh, one thing we'll come back. Okay, good. All right, so now guitar material. So, so really good. Uh, so the pure guitar interactions, uh, in fact, uh, uh, is going to give us a guitar spin like it. Um, but in real material, Again, um, the problem is that uh, we are not only having a guitar interaction, uh, but it will have uh, other interactions. So the way that I'm going to define the guitar material is that where the guitar interaction is the largest interaction in the full Hamiltonian. Okay, so we say guitar material does not mean that we just have a guitar interaction. It's just the largest uh, interaction in the full Hamiltonian, and it's not easy to satisfy that condition. By the way, so one thing we have to do is that the uh, necessary requirement is not even sufficient because even we have all these uh, conditions, we may not end up with a guitar material. They open happens to be second largest or third largest. It is allowed by the symmetry. So we know that it's present. As long as you know, the coupling is there, it's there. It's just that they are so small that we can simply ignore it and just work on the Heisenberg interaction. Um, so the uh, necessary requirement or conditions uh, first, of course, we need a Honeycomb mode insulator with a strong electron-electron interaction. And that reason, the transition metal would be a, a good candidate. <clears throat> and the bond-dependent spin interaction requires a multi-orbital because remember that the one has to change the angular momentum as well as spin through the spin of coupling um, to generate the, such a bond-dependent interaction and avoid the Heisenberg interaction. So that's the uh, and honeycomb is bipartite lattice. Uh, therefore, if you have a Heisenberg model, it'll be just up, down, up, down. We'll end up with anti ferromagnet. And so we do need uh, different types of interaction to generate the frustrations and end up with uh, some long, you know, searching, you know, the, the spin liquid that we've been uh, searching for quite a long time. Okay, um, so the candidate material that was uh, suggested in the very early days uh, was back in here. Uh, in fact, uh, this is the uh, iridate, um, which uh, stacked the uh, honeycomb iridate with oxide. And then a um, few days later, it was alpha ruthenium chloride 3 that the U of Toronto group has been first suggested. And that would be a really a good candidate, even better than the iridate due to the uh, different stacking here. It's a more two dimensional. Uh, but of course, in real life, all of candidate that we have suggested so far all have magnetic ordering at low temperature. Okay, none of them is uh, disordered. Um, disordered meaning not like uh, due to the uh, imperfection of the lattice. Uh, um, it's uh, just uh, uh, real quantum disorder. Um, so uh, the magnetic ordering at low temperature meaning that the, we have uh, non type interaction present uh, in the material, in real solid state material. So the question is that what's their roles? That's the what I'm going to address. So. Here's my outline. So, yeah, please. Yep. Yep. Uh, no, you, yes. Uh, so it's actually coming. So when I'm coming, talk, so the question was that the, whether the Kitaev interaction is largest in a full Hamiltonian does not does mean that uh, when you project into the spin in spin space or whatever the lowest state that I'm going to be interested in, uh, generate only the Kitaev interaction and then forget about the rest. Uh, that's not the case. So we will. I will show you. In fact, that that's a part of half of my talks. Uh, I'll show you how the how the microscopically Kitaev interactions are generated, and when you do that, the rest of them follows, and we are not going to ignore them. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So that's precisely my outline. So there will be a non type interaction, including the Heisenberg interactions. And there are other interactions that are also present, 
And the question is what they do. Do they generate the magnetic order? They better do because in real material, we do have magnetic order at low temperature, right? So oh, it, it's coming. So next is that, that's precisely my question. So uh, I have a two, uh, two uh, I actually have a two question that I want to address and hopefully that I'll give at least a part of answers on this. One question is that the, uh, so basically uh, what are the role of non, non type interactions? So where the non type including Heisenberg uh, and uh, in this Gitaev materials, uh, despite the Gitaev is the largest uh, and that's where the microscopic theory will be really helpful. Uh, and then the second one that I want to address is, okay, you said the key type is, uh, the material has a key type interaction largest, but there are other interactions there. And often we have a hard time to find it out. There is science and there is size. So we like, I like to address this one here is that when you have a general spin, not just the spin half, uh, like a spin one, spin three half and so on, uh, how to estimate the key type interaction based on the symmetry of the Hamiltonian. So I'll get back to that and then I'll summarize. Okay, so let's begin the first one, a microscopic model, role of the non type interaction in this type materials where other interactions do exist. Okay, often the non type interactions uh, lead to a magnetic order, okay? And so Heisenberg will be, as I said, this is a bipartite lattice, it will give you a magnetic ordering. So here's a one uh, naive um, um, scenario or naturally appears will be that uh, I have increased the non type interaction. So my x-axis is the increase of the non type interaction. And there are more and more than one kind, okay? But let's think about one kind and that will probably generate the magnetic order at some point. Uh, here is the pure Gitaev model where I represent as KSL, meaning Gitaev spin liquid will survive up to a certain, a certain uh, size of non type interaction, but then it'll have magnetic order. Um, that's precisely what probably happens in actual systems. But at finite temperature, of course, uh, this Gitai spin liquid, it's a 2D uh, with a G2, is not well defined in high finite temperatures. So you will have some crossover to a, some kind of maximally uh, entangled state. And then uh, we'll have this magnetic order, which will definitely survive at some finite temperatures here. And therefore, we can see that even we have magnetic order, if you are close by the Gitai uh, spin liquid, at finite temperature, we'll see the some kind of feature of the Gitai physics because it has the largest interactions. Yes, Piers. Question, Rachel, would be, um, what is known about the quantum phase transition between the Gitai spin liquid and the antiferromagnet? Yeah, mm -hmm. so here you go. Please repeat the question. Yeah, so the uh, question was that the, uh, what is known about the quantum phase transition between the Gitai spin liquid and the magnetic order? So here's my quantum phase transition t equals zero, which is now this axis here. And I put some parameter, which is actual parameter that we can access in the lab, which is basically a magnetic field. So I apply the magnetic field, I put a question mark. So that's precisely that, that we are looking for. And uh, numerical calculation, which unfortunately, well, actually I have some numerical calculations uh, that I will show you that the, this Gitaev spin liquid can be extended at a certain magnetic field that depends on the sign of the Gitaev interactions. If you have ferro type interactions, it is very, very the small magnetic field is actually detrimental. Like 2% uh, of uh, uh, magnetic field in terms of Gitaev strengths, uh, you will kill the Gitaev spin liquid. And then how that is extended under above this magnetic ordering is unknown yet. Okay, And then it'll be linked to, to the current experiment of this uh, uh, famous uh, thermal hall. So I'll bring back to again, but yes, that's the sum of questions that arise. And this might also depends on not only the sign of the type interaction, but also depends on the direction of the magnetic field. Because uh, recall that the, uh, the uh, what uh, Kitaev's, uh, this interaction here, you see that the, why the form of the non-time reversal breaking um, symmetry, a uh, time reversal symmetry breaking term has been added the way that HX, HY, HZ, uh, this one here, SX, SY, SF, in the quantization axis that we are using, it's going to be perpendicular to the honeycomb direction. So that is the direction which is uh, out of the honeycomb plane. And uh, that means that if you put a field within the plane, uh, this form is going to change and things is different. So you're not going to open up the here, what you're putting this uh, time reversal symmetry breaking term. Uh, one is going to gap out the C-myoranus that I defined, and then you'll get the uh, so-called non-abelian anions. 
And that C my runners is the one that, uh, you know, kept out, meaning that you will have a propagating mode at the edge of this, uh, edge of this uh, honeycomb. And that is responsible for this uh, half quantized thermal hole. And why it's half? Because it's a half of the complex fermion by runners is half. So that's uh, where that's question. coming from. Yep. Just to follow up on my question, I said, mm -hmm. what, my question was, what is known about the nature of the quantum phase condition? For example, mm -hmm. is it in the Eisen universality class? Is there any element of deconfined criticality taking place there? Is nothing known? I, I, your answer, I suspect nothing is known. But, yeah, uh, the answer is still looking for it. Question. Yeah, the question was that the, what is the nature of the quantum phase transition known in this one here? In other words, is that the quantum criticality or is that some uh, post transition and so on? And it's not known. It's uh, numerically has a lot of studies, but again, that suffered from a finite size. And so I wouldn't bet that uh, going to either first or second at this stage. So there's a strong question mark here. And uh, on the other hand, I'm going to actually say even a little more uh, radical here that not always this non type interaction leads to the magnetic ordering. It might have been that this, depending on the what's the non type interaction that I'm adding it, it might have its own character. So here's another proposal that I had stuck with the Kitaev spin liquid and my, you know, this non type interaction is actually another spin liquid. Uh, in that situation, so putting in a finite temperature, all of this is going to be all crossover from one to the other spin liquid. Uh, it's a wild speculation at this point. And then there will be, as I said, there are not uh, one B-type interaction, there are more than one. Um, so if I come up with another non g type interaction, such as Heisenberg mode, Heisenberg interactions, I'll generate the magnetic order on some of this. In that situation, so, uh, if I'm in the magnetic order state and increase the temperature here, uh, at the low temperature, we'll have magnetic order, but at high temperature, we might see some other uh, spin liquid uh, physics, which may may not be the similar to the guitar spin liquid. So that's the another one. Again, T equals zero quantum phase transition here. Uh, at very high field, of course, we'll have polarized state. Uh, it's going to be all aligned direction of the field, and that will be adiabatically connected to classical polarized state. But in the low field, there might be something interesting going on. And that is, uh, again, very unknown at this point. And as I said, uh, if the Kitaev and non type interaction, well, not if Kitaev interaction is anisotropic, but non type interaction can also be anisotropic. In this situation, this uh, P equals zero phase diagram will strongly depend on the direction of the field that we are applying in the lab. Okay, um, okay, so to understand what the type of the non type interaction we have and their roles, I'm going to go through the bit of the microscopic model for honeycomb mode insulator with a strong spin over coupling. All right, so here is the wave function that I'm going to work on. Of course, uh, one can have different, uh, different uh, situations, uh, but this is the most well known. So I'm going to uh, just uh, review this part. Uh, it's a bit of uh, old now, but uh, J effective half is the coming from spin over coupling with, uh, with the octahedra environment. So if you have a uh, environment which are different, then we'll have to start from a different uh, crystal field. So we begin with the D orbitals uh, and uh, putting in the cubic crystal, we know that from a um, space group that uh, it's a T2G EG split it. And uh, if I have a D5, I'll uh, fill up the five of electrons in this T2G. And then putting a strong spin over coupling, this uh, uh, T2G will act like effectively angular momentum minus one uh, due to this crystal field. And that uh, bring this uh, into the two sub, uh, sub band. Uh, one will be J effective half and the other will be J effective three half. Because I have D5, I'll fill, in only, uh, fill up completely three half here and fill a half of band will be left. And formula level lives in this uh, half of this uh, uh, J effective half. And that's a half field J effective half band. Um, this was studied actually motivated by the high TC because uh, strontium two iridium O4 was uh, the initial uh, mode insulator people uh, study, and this has an iso structure to the uh, cuprate. And uh, yeah, yes. Uh, this is from Jennifer Ebui, mm -hmm. and uh, he or she says, what do you mean by non kitaev Ferromagnetic Heisenberg or anti -ferro? Uh It can be Heisenberg, it can be other bond dependent. Question. Oh, this one is online, so I don't have to repeat. <laughs> 
<laughs> I will repeat the question from the from the here. Yes. Um, yeah. So when I say the non gitaev actually it's widely defined. Anything different from gitaev interaction is all non gitaev And the reason I'm going through this is to show you what types of non gitaev interaction comes in and which one is dominant. We may end up with something very different from non gitaev uh, the, the Heisenberg, and that's I'm going to introduce the gamma interaction. So that is something new. Okay, and the gamma interaction is also frustrated. And that's why my second scenario coming in, I'm dealing with one frustrated interaction Gitaev and another frustrated interaction, which is called gamma. And then we see what happens between the interplay between the two. So it's not, I'm not defining Ferro, Heisenberg, or anti -Ferro. I'm gonna come up with something completely new to some of you. Okay, um, yeah, so. Um, here is the half field, the effective half end. As I said, this was uh, initially motivated by the uh, high uh, And that's uh, that's where, I mean, I'm from high too. That's why I started thinking about this problem back in like uh, quite a while ago. Anyway, um, yeah, so starting from here, uh, when, when you're thinking about the microscopics, the first thing we have to identify is a local, the on-site, uh, my wave function or my, my state that I'm dealing with. So the effective half pictorially uh, is, uh, is a mixture of the angular momentum and a spin due to the spin of coupling. You can see that it's mixed with uh, three, uh, equally mixed with uh, uh, three T2Z, X, Y, Y, Z, and X, Y, X, Z. And colors blue and red represent spin up and spin down. And you can see that these arrows are moving around because of this uh, uh, imaginary, I, well, I have to do it twice to the same. I'm, I'm, I'm pointing the arrows in the in the zoom here and then pointing here. So my two hands are moving around. Uh, hopefully I do the good job here. Uh, yeah, so here is the uh, eye here is representing that we have finite angular momentum. It's uh, moving in this case, one arrow here. So you can see that angular momentum one and the zero and that makes the J effective half and uh, the other half, you can get it by time reversal operation. So that'll be uh, the other half with the uh, uh, time reversal operation from top to the bottom. Okay, and that's uh, very important uh, because uh, uh, I'll, I'll show you why. Okay, so that's my wave function that I'm dealing with. If I'm dealing with, uh, for example, spin one or different, my wave function is gonna be different. So starting from the local wave function, in this case, the effective half with a mixture of orbital angular momentum and a spin, then uh, we need to find out the exchange interaction. Um, so that exchange interaction for a Heisenberg was nothing but just put a U there, and then move the uh, whole, you know, electrons up back and forth and I'll generate Heisenberg. But here I have multi orbitals. I have a 3D 2Z. Uh, so what we have to use is going to be this on-site uh, Ganamori interaction limited to the T2Z. If you extend it to the easy one has to worry about little other terms, although they are slightly small, but in any case, we'll be limiting ourselves in the T2Z and use this so-called Ganamori Hubbard interactions, <laughs> which contains the Huns coupling here. And that's quite important. And after that, what we do is that, okay, we are gonna work on the hopping parameter here, just like Heisenberg model obtained from a two site of hopping back and forth. We'll do the hopping, uh, hopping from X, Z, Y, Z, X, Y. And there are form of hopping parameter here. The reason that this uh, zero here in this one, this is hoping between X, Y to X, Z or Y, Z. X, Y is a 2D looking. Uh, X, Y is like uh, this one here. It's in the plane. While the X, Z, Y, Z are uh, uh, defined on this, uh, XYZ is uh, defined on the octahedra surrounded by this uh, transition metal, okay? So this is XZ, for example, and the other is YZ here. Um, these two, uh, XZ, YZ have this so-called T2 hoping here, while the other ones are zero because of the C2 symmetry going around this uh, bond. So that is going to be important as well. Okay, uh, then what you do is that the uh, H effective, you can get it from strong coupling expansions. Uh, uh, that's a uh, well-known formula, well-known techniques uh, with basically doing a second order perturbation theory. And then that's exactly what we project on the effective half. That was a question that appeared earlier. So if you do that, what happens? Okay, so we are gonna do the standard procedure, uh, including the three orbitals with a spin orbit coupling, and then going back and forth between the two sides and then project on the effective half. So that's the procedure. All right, so if you do the procedure, uh, even though it's a effective half, it's better to think because hoping is uh, made between the orbital. So better to think about in terms of their <laughs> ingredient, which is the, uh, those orbitals. So let's consider the Z bond. I'm gonna consider only a one bond here, which is the represented by red color here. 
and then moving around the electrons from one side of uh, uh, ruthenium, for example, to the other side of ruthenium. And then in the middle, there's a p orbital. So I'm going to go through this uh, indirect hoping, uh, meaning I'm assuming that there's no direct uh, hoping between the xc or xy, xy here, but it'll be an indirect through the p orbitals uh, sitting in the middle, uh, which are probably oxygen or chlorine, which are some halogens as well. Okay, so, and then we have to do the, the other bottom here. So there'll be a 90 uh, degree XC bond sharing here. And that's the process we are gonna go through. So if I expand it uh, to mean, that's the picture like this. These are LG equal to a, a one or minus one orbital moving through the PZ orbitals here. And that is one of the whole thing that dominate. All right, so then uh, this uh, effective T naught here is gonna be this uh, uh, TXCYZ, which I call T2 square divided by Delta PD, where Delta PD will be atomic potential difference between P orbital and the D orbital. That's how I have to pay to go between these two hoping process. So if you do that, then the uh, uh, hoping the other P orbitals, it's a called indirect uh, uh, exchange between this one or backwards. Uh, so I'll have T naught and T naught uh, twice or going through TPD pi uh, square divided by Delta PD here, um, this one here. And then we end up with uh, uh, some interactions, but you see that the, because uh, X, Y orbital in this case, there is no hoping between them because uh, P, Z here is a meter odd under the Z and minus Z. So if you remember the uh, wave function over wave function law, the top is plus and bottom is minus. So the hoping integral is going to be zero due to the meter symmetry between top and bottom of the uh, honeycomb layers. Okay, so now let's look at this one in here. So if I'm hoping from the XZ to the YZ here through the PZ orbitals, the, uh, the change of the total uh, uh, angular momentum is going to be plus minus two. And that's because XZ orbital, look at this one here, wave function of J effective half, XZ orbitals, and we are not gonna change the spin because you can change the spin by hoping back and forth, but orbital is not conserved, so you can change the angular momentum. So XC is falling into the effective uh, 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 half and then uh, with the down here and then the other one falling into the effective in fact minus half. So this hoping process is not gonna conserve the angular momentum and therefore JZ effective half is also not conserved, plus minus two. By looking at this, one can immediately tell that there's no Heisenberg interaction because Heisenberg interaction is SU2 symmetric. So I cannot, uh, I'm not allowing any Heisenberg interaction. So that's why you can get rid of the Heisenberg interaction. Okay. It doesn't have to uh, go through bottom and top and cancel. It's just the projecting onto the J effective half. You will get the zero Heisenberg interaction. Interaction. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, yep. In Ahmed uh, Stela, what's the advantage of the Kitayat model over both of the Heisenberg model and the Heisen model? Um, so that means, so Kitayev interaction is not going to give a, a magnetic order while the Heisenberg interaction will give a magnetic order. So if you are interested in the magnetic order, one can just study Heisenberg, uh, but I'm actually interested in the quantum spin case. So that's why we are interested in the Kitayev interaction. Yeah, and try to avoid the Heisenberg as much as possible. And if you look at this process, the effective half with the P orbital mediated, we're actually not going to get the, any Heisenberg by the symmetry. So that's a strong statement. Unless you break the mirror Z symmetry, or unless we introduce the direct hoping between the, uh, between the, between the orbitals. So this interorbital between this uh, 1D uh, model, like X, not 1D, 1D uh, orbital, X, Z, Y, Z, uh, is going to generate uh, only something else, not the Heisenberg interaction. Um, so the only way they can generate the pseudo uh, spin interaction is going to go through the intermediate state because remember that the second order perturbation, we have to go something in the middle and that something in the middle state is a higher state. So we have to include a higher state. In the Heisenberg model, the higher state is a Hubbard interaction. So it's a doubly occupied state and you bring it back. So T scale over U where the U is the intermediate state which costs energy of U, uh, in this case, it's different because we have a multi-orbital. Intermediate state, there are two kinds. One is that the one with above up, uh, all aligned, uh, with another one is not all aligned. Uh, therefore, the, the two intermediate state will differ by the Huns coupling. So one of them will be U minus three and JH, meaning that they are more aligned along the direction, gaining the Huns coupling, and the other is going to have less gain the Huns coupling. So we have to take into account this J-effective uh, three-half state, uh, including all this intermediate state, 
and uh, then you project onto the three ha the, the half state. So as I said, should include a higher state is equal to half, and that will allow the pseudo spin interaction because you see that delta zz is plus minus two. This guy has a plus minus half, and I got a plus minus three half from the higher state, and that allows to have a, the change of the two or minus two. So that you can tell, oh, I need to have this intermediate state going through. And then once you work it out, then this jet bond here will end up with only a set SF. And then this type interaction here is going to be proportional to those two differences between the intermediate state. This minus sign is important. And if you expand, uh, uh, coupling is smaller than the U, then you can see that this uh, will generate the Huns coupling um, linear to the Huns coupling. So without the Huns coupling, this term is not, uh, not there. So that's why I said two conditions which are necessary. One is the spin of coupling to generate this effective half. Although we write S here, this refer to the J effective halfway function here, and then we'll just use it for from now on, just call it S. Um, and another one is a multi orbital with the Huns coupling. Without it, there is no heat type interaction. So that's how you generate the heat type interaction. So as I said, if you have only P orbital mediated indirect hoping, uh, my local wave function is half here and going through back and forth. Well, I just to show you that so we got the SCSC here. And then what do we do with X bond, the Y bond? Actually, that's rather straightforward and simple. We use the symmetry. So if you do the C3 symmetry, C3 along the C axis, C axis is out of play, which is one, one, one in terms of local uh, X, Y, Z coordinate. The local is this uh, uh, octahedra coordinate X, Y, Z. So if I do the C3 here, um, then C3 along the one, 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 the out of the plane, then uh, as said, is going to change the SX and SX change the S set. That's a cyclic permutation of the spin uh, rotating by two pi by three. So then uh, that's where the guitar type interaction is actually coming out here. And that one is back to this uh, Guignard's uh, old paper, so 2005. So it's, uh, you can get them from most of this, uh, in this in this two papers. So it's not, uh, in fact, that this uh, Hamiltonian itself exists even earlier than the 2009. If you can go back to the 2005 of this uh, triangularis, the bone dependent interaction appears in this paper that I found uh, that uh, on a triangularis, uh, you can see this ABC and uh, written in this form here, but you can rewrite them in terms of this form here. And then you can see that there's a Heisenberg term here, and then there is this uh, uh, type interaction in a one bone. And then other bond will have SX, SX, and then YY, and so on. So it's coming from uh, much earlier than what we used to know. Okay, now in real material, of course, we are not just having um, P orbital mediated hoping, we have direct hoping between the, yeah. I uh, hear. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What's the difference between the other bond? The other bond will have only a y y here. Oh, that's precisely because this wave function is the same as uh, same as this form in here. So if I working on this, I work on the z bond, right? And then you work on the z bond, I end up with Ising interaction on z bond. Okay. Now I work on the x bond. When I'm working on the X bond here, um, I'm not gonna, it's basically your orbital is all rotated by C3. So you rotate it and then you will find that the SZ is changing as X, S, X, S, Y. So that's why this bond is going to be bond dependent uh, Ising interaction. And um, that's precisely the same in here because this paper is on the triangle lattice. I don't remember it's uh, uh, Nico or something, uh, but in any case, uh, uh, and when Lambda spin orbit coupling is very large, um, but it's a 3D stamp. I think it was a 3D. Uh, it's a cobalt tape here. So it's a cobalt tape. So it's a cobalt triangle lattice. Uh, when lambda is big, uh, it, again, back to the z effective halfway function. So I'm just showing that uh, historically it was showing it much earlier than uh, even 2009 that uh, the one of famous papers. Okay. And then I'm just rewriting them in terms of this. That in this form here, we'll end up with Heisenberg and then Gitaev interaction here, you know, one point. Good. Okay, now in real material, of course, we are not just having an indirect hoping, we have direct hoping. And direct hoping between the XY, XY, it's a single orbital moving back and forth, and that's Heisenberg interaction, the first one that I introduced. 
So then we have uh, this uh, uh, Heisenberg interaction, which will be proportional to direct hoping T here, differ from the, in the uh, going through the P orbitals. Okay, and there is another interaction, that's a gamma interaction that I just uh, represent earlier. There is another way to do it because it's a uh, 90 degree uh, uh, edge sharing. So these are not gonna appear, neither the Gitaev nor the, uh, this uh, gamma interaction is not gonna appear in a uh, 180 bond share. So here we can do two process. One process is going through the P orbital, but I don't have to come back through the P orbital, but I can come back to the direct hoping the T. <laughs> So in this case, the gamma interaction can be worked it out, and then one can show that the, in fact, that this is going to be proportional to the hoping, indirect hoping parameter T naught and T, and then proportional to the Huynh's coupling. So that one is going to be another bond dependent interaction because <laughs> Z bond will take SX, SY, but the X bond will take XZ and SY, SY and SZ, and so on. Okay, so here's this NLXP model in the 2D honeycomb. Uh, I'm just writing a Z bond here, again, this one bond here. And then I just want to remind you that the X, Y, Z is this local coordinate. Uh, Z is the direction to a P orbital, where the uh, N ion sitting or ligand uh, chemistry uh, in, in that so here is the one. And then X is another, another N ion here. And then Y is that one. This becomes important because we might change the uh, rotate, we might rotate the X, Y, Z here uh, towards the some um, ABC coordinate, which is crystallographic axis. Okay, so we end up with this uh, interaction. Now, uh, microscopics uh, contain uh, three terms. These are allowed by, not only allowed by symmetry, but also uh, one can see which one is dominant in under what condition. So we have a Kitaev interaction and gamma interaction and the Heisenberg interaction, which is bond independent, but there are two bond dependent interaction. So this is another bond dependent interaction. It's a Z, Z, Z bond will take Ising form of this, but gamma interaction will take the X, Y form of this. So it's X, S, Y, as you rotate along the Y bond and Z bond, this uh, X, Y, Z will in fact change. Okay, as I said here, cyclic from X, Y, Z. Okay, so I wanna pay a little attention on the gamma interaction. It says, so it's alpha beta, alpha beta going along X, Y, Z bond. Uh, again, Z bond will take as X, as Y. Kitaev uh, interaction is bond dependent Ising interaction. This is bond dependent X, Y interaction. It's highly frustrated and uh, we don't know the solution yet. Uh, and uh, we'll just to show you a bit of uh, uh, between what happens between the two later on. So when uh, PD orbital, this overlap dominate and that we think is the case for the ruthenium trichloride, for chloride, chloride then the Kitaev interaction is a ferromagnetic. Uh, I'll go back and show you the science uh, because it's rather important later on that the, um, where that goes, I got it too far away. Um, so if you have this uh, P orbital dominate, here you go, here is a minus sign here. And then uh, the rest of them is actually scarce, absolute uh, positive. So this Kitaev interaction, when the PD orbital dominate, uh, that's the only term that opens, and it's a ferro Heisen, ferro Gitaev. Okay, so it comes as a ferro Gitaev interaction, and then the gamma interaction is actually anti ferro in that case, and then it's both of them are much bigger than the Heisenberg interaction. So that's where we end up with the Gitaev material. With the non Gitaev, there are two kinds one is the gamma, and the other is a Heisenberg. There are two types of uh, um, non Gitaev interaction, and their roles are different. Okay, so now before we go into the what they do, yes. I know this is like, are you assuming only um, the X, Z, and Y orbitals are degenerate? The X, Y is a little bit different? No, X, Y is also degenerate. Yes, I'll repeat the question, right? So uh, Sri was asking whether I am assuming the, uh, among the T2Z, whether the X, Z, and Y is only degenerate and X, Y is non degenerate in the local, uh, local basis. Uh, they are actually all degenerate. So that's only true in the limit where the atomic spin orbit coupling is the biggest energy. Yes, coupling. yes. So the question is that whether that is only true when the atomic spin orbit coupling is the biggest, that's true. So if you are taking, if you ignore the trigonal distortion, like a small distortion, which is always a, a present in real material, then uh, those uh, uh, trigonal field will come in and XC and YZ will in this case, the trigonal field is within the honeycomb. So in fact, uh, it's not gonna be XCYZ, which are 
uh, degenerate and XY is splitted, that will happen in a tetragonal, the, the square uh, orthorhombic or tetragonal situation. In this situation, it will decouple, it'll, the degeneracy will appear again. Three, uh, three uh, states will be split in a 2 1, but they're going to be EZ prime and A1G. So that's split by the trigonal field. And assuming that trigonal field is rather small, uh, which is the case in the ruthenium, for example, in the 4D atomic spin of coupling is about 400 MeV. Uh, trigonal field is like order of 10 MeV or something. So in that situation, you can still think about this is still degenerate. Yeah, and trigonal field is actually rather important later on because it allows them additional non retired interaction. Okay, so before I go into the uh, what they do, just uh, you know, now we are working on the uh, the three uh, three interaction terms. Um, Heisenberg, Kitaev, and the gamma. And uh, before we go into what are the phase diagram, P0 phase diagram, it's useful to go get back to the hidden symmetry because uh, if you can change this Hamiltonian into some, uh, some Heisenberg types, uh, we know where the magnetic ordering appears. So here is the phase diagram, which are drawn in a circle here. And uh, uh, the way that's oriented, um, you can see that the seta is uh, zero in the center. And then moving towards the boundary of the circle is going to be set up pi by two. And the cosine set up is the gamma and sine set up take a J and K. That means that in the center of the circle is a pure gamma and outside the boundary here is going to be K and Heisenberg. Okay, K time and Heisenberg is boundary here. And then the azimuthal angle, the phi is going to take the ratio between the K time and Heisenberg. So here is an anti ferro Heisenberg. Here is the anti ferro gamma on the north pole here, and then the uh, to the left here is going to be ferro Heisenberg. South pole here is going to be ferro uh, Kitaev interactions. Now the dots are here is the where the SU two symmetry occurs. So we know that Heisenberg here is a uh, the as Heisenberg of course two Heisenberg point is again Heisenberg model. So we know that anti ferro ferro appears on this uh, left and right. But uh, if you look at zigzag here and then a uh, vortex here, these are the hidden. SU2 symmetric, uh, symmetric point. So in other words, uh, if you do the four sub lattice uh, or six sub lattice transformation, something like uh, this, uh, it's a one of example of the T4, meaning four sub lattice transformation from each of the site one, two, three, four, uh, doing this uh, transformation here will map to the, uh, this model uh, become a SU2 Heisenberg. So, that will correspond to this uh, site here, K4 minus 2J and gamma is zero is going to be SU2 uh, symmetric again after this transformation. And this transformation requires the fourth site. That means my magnetic order will have at least four site uh, have to be repeated. And that means that's exactly a zigzag order. So that's how the zigzag appears. Zigzag here is gonna be fourth site, uh, two blues and two red, and that'll be my unicell. And then vortex state requires to have a uh, six sub lattice transformation. And that's again K equal to gamma. And that's the where the SU2 occurs. So when the K dive and gamma comes at the same sign, the, each of them just uh, kills the frustration to each other. And then we are back to the SU2 symmetry Heisenberg. So that will be an ordered state. So these are the place. And then there is a stripe here. You can do the dual transformation and that will be a stripe and the zigzags are also mapped. So there are few points other than the Heisenberg, actual pure Heisenberg, we know that magnetic order will appear. So that hidden symmetry will help us to identify full phase diagram. And that's, uh, uh, let's do that. Uh, so here is again, that's the big stars are the where we know that magnetic order should appear. And then I'm gonna lay out uh, this with the 24 side ED calculation. Uh, and you can see that indeed, uh, this is a large phase space is occupied by anti ferro and then large phase space occupied by ferro. And then here is a zigzag and here is a stripe and here is 120 uh, vortex state that appears. So we know those are the magnetic order state. And then the rest of them that does not seem to have magnetic order clearly within this 24 site cluster is this area uh, here, the, the, the red uh, color here. And also before you look at that, of course, Kitaev here is not gonna be a point. It occupies small phase space. And then plus Gitaev and ferro Gitaev here is going to be extremely narrow, but uh, we have this Gitaev spin liquid does exist in our narrow phase space. X here is going to be something uh, very uh, disordered. And uh, in fact, uh, most of the material that I have said uh, is falling into here. Ferro, K4, 
Kita have antipero Heisenberg, uh, antipero gamma. I'm showing only our antipero gamma here. Remember that cosine theta is a zero pi by two. So we are taking only a positive uh, gamma because that's more relevant to the actual situation. Okay, so all this uh, material with the additional interaction, which are allowed by the symmetry, of course, you can have third nearest neighbor uh, and so on, second nearest neighbor and so on. And they, they are going to be there too. Okay, and I said that, well, this falling into, you just said that this falling into the uh, uh, actual material, but actual material, you said that it was magnetically ordered at low temperature. But at the same time, I said, well, in this uh, Kita and Gamma range, apparently there are some, looks like some disorder state that are difficult to uh, identify within a small size cluster. So what happens there, uh, but it has to be magnetic order. So one way to get the magnetic order is add a small trigonal distortion. So if I add a small trigonal distortion, which uh, Sri also asked question, that in fact that there is additional interaction that are allowed, which is the so-called gamma prime. And you can see that effect of gamma prime is basically when the trigonal distortion have a small negative gamma prime, then this window here, lots of this disorder state will be replaced by the zigzag order. So it's very sensitive to the magnetic order again. In particular, that zigzag order. Okay, so uh, I will work on the uh, Kitab and Gamma model now. And why do we care? Well, because as I said, uh, well, the, the actual situation, dominant interaction is the ferro Kitab and anti ferro Gamma. And then uh, we'll have a small other interactions, gamma prime, Heisenberg, and so on, that'll generate the magnetic ordering. And then if we apply the magnetic field, we may destroy some of this magnetic order and then reveal the phase set by this uh, uh, dominant interactions. So now the question is, what is the phase of the ferro type and anti ferro gamma models, uh, which I have uh, addressed, but let's uh, look it up uh, and see a bit of uh, details there. So I'm gonna rotate my uh, phase diagram here. Uh, I, my circle has rotated uh, because uh, from the ferro type to our anti ferro gamma, that will be my X axis. Okay, so I'm gonna starting from ferro type and anti ferro gamma and see what is the phase between these two. Two frustrated uh, interactions, which they don't cancel each other because they come with a different signs. All right, so uh, here's the two uh, competing interactions, competing, cooperating, I don't know yet, uh, and which has a two different signs. Uh, when they are equal sign, again, there is a hidden SU2, so that develops six sites magnetic order called 120 or a vortex. So pure Gitai model is Gitai Spinnaker, uh, pure gamma model is controversial. So it's a hard problem. Uh, lots of people have tried, uh, you can see, the list is not complete because it stopped somewhere last year and there are more lists uh, added up here, uh, except one of the studies uh, by the variation of Monte Carlo, where do they do find the zigzag order, most of others are uh, presenting that it is uh, some kind of disorder state. I like to point out nice work by the uh, classical spin by Natasha and Yonis that uh, this uh, gamma model, when you take it the large spin, it's a classical spin liquid with a macroscopic degeneracy of this uh, growing as a system size. And they also show that uh, it is actually stable with a small quantum fluctuation. So it's, uh, I found it's a very, very nice paper and uh, pleasant to read. Okay, uh, so just wanna show you one of those. I listed the many of them, but uh, one of them, this is done by uh, DMRG calculation by Matthias. Uh, um, you can see that the uh, ferro type to so anti ferro type and, and going through the angle. So here we set the angle of minus cosine phi is going to be K and then sine phi will be a gamma and uh, zero here correspond the ferro type and then uh, one here, which is the pi correspond anti ferro type. Pi by two here in the middle will correspond anti ferro gamma. And uh, uh, you can see that uh, this uh, color here representing uh, some kind of magnetic order. You can see the magnetic order here, zero, absolutely zero, all the way before you hit the SU2, uh, hidden SU2 appears in the middle here, uh, around the point uh, 75, um, and that's where 120 appears. But the other ones here, uh, if you look at the static structure factors of every momentum point that we can access, uh, we don't find anything much happens. On the other hand, there is a sharp jump here, as if uh, this is like a, some kind of Lipschitz transition type, uh, which is kind of speculation. Uh, there's a the sharp occurs that means anti-ferrogitaev are different from anti-ferro, uh, anti, uh, the ferrogitaev 
spin liquid is different from this uh, gamma some some disorder state appears here. These are dynamic structure factors in a different point. Uh, the top left is going to be the uh, ferrogitaev, and then uh, bottom bottom right here is going to be anti gamma. You can see that there is not much watering. They seem to have a small gap here, but it's just DMIG with us, you know, four or six uh, leg. Uh, so of course we are missing some momentum space. And so we can tell if it's gapless or gapped. But in any case, we have large uh, disorder state. And that was confirmed by many others on this uh, list here. Okay, now we are gonna turn it into this uh, little more interesting, like a magnetic field. I'm gonna add a magnetic field what happens uh, on this uh, disorder state. Maybe we just end up with some polarized state. Um, so uh, magnetic order is going to destroy some magnetic order if I set the magnetic order and then we build a phase again. So here is again uh, the circle uh, which rotated and my X axis is starting from the left with the ferro kitaev to uh, moving towards the center of the circle which is anti gamma, and that will be my axis. As I said, this is, uh, this is a kind of disorder. So I'm gonna just to put the magnetic order, zigzag magnetic order by adding some gamma prime. Uh, so ferro gamma prime here will add uh, some magnetic order here. So and see what happens with that magnetic order in the field. Okay, so, uh, and we know that the, um, this is quite an isotropic. So we are gonna put the field and then rotate to the field and see what happens between the different direction of the field. So here's one thing. Um, okay, uh, so uh, here's the, our honeycomb. Again, the different color represent X, Y, Z point. And uh, uh, C-axis is the one, one, one with respect to S, X, S, Y, S, Z that we have written up, or the effective half to X, Y, Z. Um, so this will be one, one, one axis uh, is the outer plane. And then we are gonna rotate this uh, angle of the field and then uh, put it into the direction of one, one, two, minus two, which is the A axis, uh, so-called. Uh, and uh, that is going to be parallel to the zigzag within the honeycomb. Okay, it's a perpendicular to one of the bones, if you like. All right, and then the phase diagram is like this. Angle has been five degrees here. And uh, here's a gamma over K. This is non type interaction. But we have added additional type interaction, which is gamma prime, to set the magnetic order here, which is the zigzag, at the low field. This is t equals zero, so it's on the uh, t, the zero temperature phase diagram. Um, and what we have found is that the uh, at the few type here we have type spin again, and then uh, we have a zigzag order set by this uh, small trigonal distortion, and then gamma over k is going to enhance the zigzag order. But then uh, as a function of field, we have found that on top of this zigzag, there is a large window of this disorder state that seems to survive before we polarize. So white area is going to be polarized state. Uh, and there seems to be a transition along these lines here. This is again 24 side ED. So it suffers from a sum of the finite size. So one has to take that into account. Um, if I align the field along the A axis, along the in-plane field here, and in that case, what we found is that, in fact, this uh, uh, large window of the uh, disorder state disappears. So we have this uh, zigzag order sets in, and then uh, it just immediately polarizes into the polarized state when the field is in the plane, in the plane of particular direction, which is the direction parallel or perpendicular to one of the bond. Okay, so here is the guitar spin again. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, yes, yeah, sorry, yeah. The color corresponds to the expectation value of Plaque operator. In fact, so this is a negative and this is a positive. In fact, the polarized state is also positive. We just uh, changed, you know, we just uh, uh, changed, just removed it. Never larger than one. Never larger than one, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, so, but here, uh, yeah, so, yes, here is very large field, by the way. Uh, here is very tiny field. So you can kill the zigzag with a very small in-plane magnetic field, but it will take a lot, of, uh, uh, a lot of field to get it into this state. Uh, and that's also consistent with the experiment in the ruthenium trichloride. So a lot of things we know from uh, this uh, study. So, uh, so we have found intermediate field disorder X uh, when the gamma is uh, finite and the magnetic field is out of plane. So that's something to bear in mind. 
So after this, uh, there has been uh, other studies. So this is one of nice work uh, uh, by uh, people here with, and also Yongak is involved here. Uh, infinite tensile product state uh, with the field along the C-axis. Um, they have uh, optimized uh, this uh, various initial state of uh, all of this kind. Um, and what they found that the uh, gamma, again, gamma over K here with a small gamma prime and set the zigzag order here. And uh, uh, again, the guitar spin linkage is confined here. And there's a, this X state, which are separated from the guitar, but different from the UD. But I think that, that, that it is still, the, there is a disorder state has found X here. And they call it pneumatic uh, paramagnet uh, because it breaks the uh, C3 rotational symmetry between the XYZ uh, bond. Uh, but it is, again, disorder state, different from the polarized state. So this is infinity uh, system. So hopefully, that is telling us that there is a something interesting going on with the finite gamma and the magnetic field along the C-axis. And there are many other studies that has been also pointed out the similar uh, disorder state after that. Okay, um, good. So here's a summary of the T equals zero phase diagram. Uh, again, uh, we have found that depending on the magnetic field direction, so here's a gamma over K, I'm specifically using now the non gitaev not a Heisenberg, but gamma interaction divided by uh, gitaev gitaev here is a ferro, gamma is anti ferro, different signs so that they are not canceling the frustration. Um, here, the gitaev spin linkage seems to be confined in a very narrow window of the uh, pure gitaev limit. Uh, field is like about 2% of field where you can be basically killed. Uh, and then we have polarized state. There's an unknown uh, X space that seems to be nicely sitting on top of magnetic order to a polarized state, something robust is there. And on the other hand, if you apply the field along the A-axis in plane along the zigzag chain of the honeycomb shape, uh, then um, in fact that the gamma over K zigzag order is just uh, simply disappears and then go back to the polarized state. I didn't put the uh, size here, but uh, this one here is much smaller, like a 0.2 here, while here is uh, one point something. So you need 100 Tesla to look at uh, this one here. Here, we need the order of 10 Tesla. You can kill it and then go into the polarized state. Okay, so I put it here. That's the, uh, we are gonna now focus on this one here, uh, magnetic field in plane and then zigzag order. And that strength of magnetic field, if I increase, we both go into the polarized state. And that's precisely experimental setup that has been done in many, many labs. So let's now connect uh, to the uh, experimental case of Ruthenium trichloride, and I just wanna, well, I was trying to check the chat, uh, but hopefully peers can do it. There are seven of them now. So um, if I have any questions that I'll take it before I move to the uh, ruthenium trichloride. Ah, okay. <laughs> I just I didn't check. And uh, Chen asks, could you elaborate more on how the pneumatic power magnetic phase is different from the polarized phase? Um, okay, yeah. So the actually a transition between the two appears to be that uh, the polarized state. So if you measure the bond <laughs> energy, so we have X bond, Y bond, then Z bond. One can measure the energy of the bond. It's so just take the Hamiltonian and take the part of Hamiltonian, measure the energy or expectation of Hamiltonian on that bond. Uh, polarized state is where the bond energy is all equivalent. Okay? Along the C axis, X bond, Y bond, Z bond all have the same energy. Uh, which is expected because I put the field along the one 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 equivalent between the all three bonds. Three bonds are sharing the same thing, but the pneumatic paramagnet here, it doesn't have a local magnetic order. It's disappeared from the zigzag, but on the other hand, the bond energy of the X bond, Y bond, and Z bond are different. Okay? So in fact, there are a couple of them here. So some bond here is having a higher energy than the other, and then bond energy actually switches from the one to the other. So the C3 symmetry along the C-axis is going to rotate X bond, Y bond, and Z bond, but that's spontaneously broken in this pneumatic parameter. Hopefully that answers the question. Okay, so that's what uh, they have found. Okay, yeah, yes, please. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. 
Um, yeah, so the temperature effect, yes, that's uh, in fact now, that was my uh, y-axis earlier, but now let me put it this way, which is out of uh, the plane. Yeah, so guitar spin liquid is actually a 2D uh, Z2. So they are going to, uh, it's not well-defined because you have topological defect, which are proliferating immediately. Um, so it's going to cross over to uh, some uh, entangled state, but it's not, not uh, long range, but it's maximally, so maximally. But in any case, you have some guitar physics appears here. Zigzag order will have some, uh, some finite, uh, uh, finite uh, ordering, T nil. T nil will appear here. And then this one will have some kind of, so these two transition here will have uh, some crossover at the finite temperature. And they will survive all the way above this uh, zigzag ordering. So if I have a PC field and a finite temperature, then I would expect that the above my zigzag order, I'll see a physics of X space. And that will probably represent some of the um, continuum spectrums and other things. Yeah, and here is going to be much more. Uh, so here it tells me the same thing. And then zigzag order above the zigzag, we probably will see a polarized state mainly. It depends on how far I am, right? Because if I'm nearby, I'll see some guitar, but I know that gamma interaction is at least half of the guitar of interaction. We are somewhere far away here. So I'll actually see a polarized state. That's my, that's what I think. Um, yeah. Okay, so ruthenium trichloride. How much time do I have? Where is the, where I can see the time? Uh, we are now approaching the last 20 minutes. Okay, excellent. Okay, so let's see if I can get to the symmetry part. So. Uh, okay, ruthenium cryotry. Um, okay, so idea of the ruthenium cryotry is uh, basically we know that iridium was uh, five plus, and that give us uh, uh, well four plus, which give a D five. So we said, well, ruthenium is three plus here, which has to be similar, and it's a better two D material. So that's where it comes from the proposal that this will be a one of the promising candidate. Um, then we studied like uh, alpha ruthenium cryotry, and where that goes back, it goes back to the chemistry. It's uh, uh, it's uh, coming from these uh, papers of uh, less common metal uh, back to 1892. So it's made in that long time ago um, and they were calling less common, but I was told from experimentalists that the ruthenium trichloride is abundant in the lab. Uh, and uh, there are lots of activities because it's easy to, easy, to, easy to kill it the magnetic order with a small field, 10 Tesla in the lab with the in-plane field. Um, so here are the Polinis uh, earlier data uh, is a function of one over temperature and the y axis is logarithmic. isn't it? So you can see that uh, at the low temperature, which is this right panel here uh, is going to be the uh, low temperature here. Uh, and that's a very nice insulator. So my colleague Yong Jun was telling me it's hard to measure the, uh, conduct the resistivity at a low temperature because it shoots up. So it's a very, very good uh, insulator. Um, this is the 96. I found that uh, this is the first paper, and they were talking about semiconductor. This is supposed to be semiconductor, but we know that it's a D5. So based on the Venn theory, it's supposed to be a metal. Uh, there's no reason to be a semiconductor, but that's what was believed in the 70s. Uh, 90s is the uh, Polini was the first one who suggests that this uh, has a very earlier uh, ARPES data. Uh, it's actually not on ARPES. Is that the ARPES? No, I think it's uh, only the... It's a wave vector. Okay, it's an RPS data. Uh, wave vector is here. Um, it's, uh, it was a narrow band, uh, maybe a mode insulator. So that was a uh, suggestion. Earlier data is uh, back in uh, when we just studied. So this is Young Jun's, uh, one of the very early data, shows the strong anisotropy between the A, B, and C axis. And that is under understandable because gamma interaction is very anisotropic within versus the out of plane. Um, and therefore, if the gamma is anti ferro we expect that it's a hot axis is along the C-axis. In other words, if I apply the field along the C-axis, it's very hard to polarize. Okay, and then there was uh, some magnetic order appears at the low temperature. You can see the two peaks. Uh, the above peak is known to be a stacking fault, so-called. And this is a neutron data. Uh, on the, and uh, there are some of nice peaks representing the magnetic order of the zigzag kind. And then after that, there has been many studies uh, which confirms the similar magnetic order. Okay, so magnetic ordering appears. And what about double of TC or inelastic as governed by some guitar interaction because guitar interaction is largest despite it has magnetic order. So earlier studies of the Raman, uh, Raman by, uh, in fact, it's a Ken Butch's group 
Uh, and then we have lots of uh, really nice uh, work by the Stephen uh, Nugglers, and uh, they've seen the, some of this uh, inelastic neutron scattering, showing some of this broad hump here, which survive at a at a high, uh, finite temperature above the uh, above the uh, magnetic field, which is a 15 case or here. You can see a lot of this nice uh, uh, broad spectrum that is uh, both uh, inelastic here, both below and above the above the uh, magnetic ordering temperature. So that sort of indicate that there is a strong frustrations and maybe it has some of the tile contributions. Okay, <clears throat> and then the field induced spin ligate was first uh, uh, studied by uh, this group here. Um, you can see that uh, I don't know the parameters because in the beginning, we are all using a different notation for a different interactions. Uh, so it's hard to uh, map into what parameter they are using. But uh, in, a, in, a, in any case, uh, as a function of field, um, um, they have found that there is a, some kind of uh, intermediate state, which you can see here much better. So this is expectation value of this so-called plaque operator around the hexagon um, product of the six spin operator. And um, they do have this negative plaque and there's a sharp uh, decrease here, which they call maybe gap uh, spin liquid here before it polarizes. So that's the kind of uh, pictures. Okay, now back to, now the thermal transport, this was the what uh, made a lot of uh, attentions. I don't have time to go through all uh, the details, but I'll quickly uh, review and remind you that the uh, magnetic field they applied is mainly an in-plane. Here is uh, in the beginning, they had a outer plane component, but it was a function of uh, in-plane component. H parallel here, X axis is uh, in-plane magnetic field. Uh, here is a zigzag, as we discussed, uh, which disappears uh, around the seven Tesla or something. And there's a small window of the two Teslas where uh, something ha happens and then the polarized state occurs. So here is a kappa uh, thermal hole conductivity divided by temperature. And you can see that the small window of so-called half quantized, half quantized integer, half integer uh, quantized values. And that brought a lot of attentions. Okay, so. Uh, on the other hand, that was uh, challenged by other experimental groups. Uh, one of them is, again, magnetic field is now they all planed in the A-axis. Uh, with the A-axis, uh, there is a small window of quantum spin liquid. This is a Panong's group, and this one is Hidetakagi. You can see that thermal hole conductivity here, they just go through the half values. Half is somewhere here, they go through it. Here, on the other hand, uh, uh, it, it, it seems to be there's a, some range of parameter space. With the field, they appear, but uh, again, it's hard to see with your bare eyes. Both of them has uh, represents, despite the difference between the two, uh, they seem to have some indication of this uh, quantum spin liquid or some disorder state, which I told you in theory, we don't see them when you have magnetic field in the A axis. And in, furthermore, the Poinong's group has this quantum spin liquid is not the guitar spin liquid. Uh, in fact, that they are suggesting that there's uh, some quantum oscillations here in the kappa xx longitudinal component with uh, you know, moving up and down, there are three peaks here, and that represents some kind of different quantum spin liquid from a guitar spin liquid. It's uh, a lot of uh, interest going on here. Um, okay, and then that oscillation was again challenged by the Hidetakagi school here, and you can see this quantum oscillation is they are representing. These are two different samples made by different methods, uh, uh, and uh, um, this is the DMDH uh, as a function of the field. And this one is a phase diagram as a function of field and a temperature. What they did is that these sharp peaks or oscillations uh, or non, non uh, uh, how do you call it? Uh, some some singular, singularity looking behavior or non monotonic behavior can be mapped into uh, some of these phase transitions here. And uh, uh, that uh, was indicated by some kind of magnetic transitions, which had probably something to do with the stacking of the system. Okay, so I just wanna uh, summarize the current state between the theory and experiment. In fact, that, as I said, in the theory side, FM ferromagnetic guitar with anti gamma reason, uh, zigzag actually transition to a polarized state. We don't find anything in the middle. This is a T equals zero uh, phase uh, diagram. Uh, zigzag to a polarized state when the field is along the A-axis and guitar spin liquid is confined in a very narrow area. On the other hand, uh, this is the field and the temperature. So I'm gonna rotate 
to make the comparison. So we are looking at only this side, magnetic field here. You can compare with this arrow here. Uh, they, pre they found that there is something else, the quantum spin liquid or something in the middle. Well, we don't find anything in the middle unless field is out of plane. So we are saying that this is out of plane field. Uh, the gamma is our hard axis. Gamma generates the C axis to be hard axis, and that generates some kind of disorder state. So in theory, disorder axis occurs in the C axis. And the recent experiment uh, by this uh, uh, Chinese groups here has shown that this zigzag is uh, very hard to uh, remove when you have a C axis field. Um, and you can see that zigzag is actually decreasing here. A, this one, X axis, is an angle. So as I move along the C-axis, uh, this actually uh, requires a, a smaller field to destroy. And then above this uh, zigzag, there is some kind of disordered state appears. Uh, and uh, X -axis, Y axis is, uh, is not a linear uh, field. So you can see the top here is about 140 Tesla. So it's a very high field consistent with the, experience, the theoretical calculation. Okay, so the possible origins, uh, maybe a sample dependence, exchange interactions. Sample dependence was proposed, well, not the, it's a presented, actually reported uh, by uh, the Japanese group here. You can see that ABC samples with the susceptibility, chi here, high temperature susceptibility is different between the samples. Means that exchange interaction is quite sensitive to the sample to a sample. Uh, because it's low temperature is different magnetic or no magnetic order, but high temperature susceptibility is mainly set by the exchange interactions and different samples seems to have a different uh, interactions. A sample is the one that shows the nice uh, half quantization here and the other samples, they don't. Like uh, this samples, for example, they don't see uh, any kappa XY. It's actually just the zero here. So it has a strong sample dependence, uh, kind of understood, well expected because when you have strong spin of coupling, they couple to the lattice, small lattice change will generate the different exchange coupling strengths. So if you have a different stackings, uh, it's a van der Waals material. So when you stack the C act, when you stack the uh, in plane out of the C axis, uh, the way they stacks, uh, they stacks and then slide, stacks in a slide. And depending on how they slide, uh, they can form a different space group. Uh, one is called, for example, P3112, and then this is C2M. And there is a R3 bar, which has a C3 symmetry and anyway. So these are the different stacking you can see that. And depending on the stacking, in fact, that the hoping parameter is different. You can see some of this uh, listed. And uh, Kitaev is the one that in fact uh, can even uh, change the sign uh, in this case. For example, it here is, is an anti -ferro. So one has to be careful about um, um, what the uh, space group of the actual bulk material is, okay? So, and uh, as far as I know, uh, most of people think it's a C2M, but uh, there are other stacking apparently happens depending on how you grow the sample. So my suggestion will be that we need one given sample and then look at the full uh, analysis, like a look at the magnetic ordering directions and all of those will tell us exactly what magnetic uh, exchange interaction that we have. Good. All right, um, do I have 10 minutes? Yes, seven minutes. Okay, so uh, seven minutes. 10 minutes, okay. Okay, so I'm gonna go through quickly uh, the uh, my second question so about how to generate, the, yes. Yes, uh, uh, so I believe that there were, uh, yes, so there are people who are working on the, yes. So the question was, is there a way to generate the single layer, extrapolate to the, the single layer? And ex, 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 exploration, yes. So the, uh, yes, the answer is yes. And there are people who have studied, uh, they can, it's a van der Waals. So you can, it's a, like a graphene, you can use a Scott, Scott tape to cre cleave the uh, single layer. And uh, that has been done. Um, people have been growing on the graphene, for example. In that case, the graphene and the uh, ruthenium cry three, they hybridize and there is a hole or so there is a, some doping that generates. So you move away from insulator. Um, uh, yeah, so in that case, uh, I think people are still working on it. Let me put it that way. Yeah, yes. A couple of slides back, you showed the data for the, for the gas operators that they still operate. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, so the question is uh, whether uh, one can measure experimentally this uh, flux of, uh, operator. And uh, if you do that, then uh, what was that? In fact, that I don't think we have measured, I don't know how to measure in the experimental, just so this itself. I'm sorry? So that is the data from Oh, this is a theory. This is a theory data. Yeah. Yeah, and that theory was you know, kind of uh, invoked or motivated a lot of experiment. Okay. Okay, so maybe I have now nine minutes. Uh, let me just quickly go through the symmetry of the problem. It, it's, I think this is something. So, okay, so so far I've been talking about the spin half or the effective half. The question that was addressed uh, earlier was that uh, can we have a good type interaction with the higher spin S? And uh, if you do, then how you generate them and how you estimate the strengths. So examples of uh, many of those spin one, nickel diiodide and chromium triiodide and cobalt is a effective half. There are many, many uh, now several candidates that appears, but some of them include the higher spins. Uh, spin S guitar was uh, theoretically studied uh, by Pascarans uh, um, et al. here. Uh, and uh, they have shown that, in fact, this WP is now, uh, instead of product, uh, you can generate, generate another uh, operator here. And one can show that uh, they also commit to the Hamiltonian and generate the ultra short, uh, short range uh, correlations. But it's not exactly a solvable problem. So. Uh, the numerically it was studied uh, because it's not exactly solvable that it might be a, some kind of quantum spin ligate. Now the question is again, how can we generate the bond dependent interaction bigger than spin half? Okay, that's hard because uh, remember that, that there are two requirements. One is the Hund's coupling and the other is spin coupling and they are not compatible with each other. So for example, if I have a Hund's coupling uh, larger, that is the case for a 3D samples, uh, N equal three, uh, in that case, the Huns coupling will make, for example, the A system here uh, will have an easy two above, so I'll have a spin S equal one state. But since the Huns coupling is much larger, that means that uh, my spin over coupling is much, much smaller, then there will be no mixtures of angular momentum and spin that's necessary to generate the bond dependent interaction. So what do we do? Well, actually, we can use the heavy anions here. Uh, because uh, my anion ligand will be heavy like iodines with the spin orbit couplings of about 800 MeV, then you can see that the P orbitals will split into half and three half. And uh, one can go through this uh, P orbitals and will generate the holes and one holes and two holes. And there is suffer from this spin orbit coupling here. So spin orbit coupling in the heavy anions is the, what uh, is going to generate the spin orbit coupling. So the, the, the generate the uh, bone dependent interaction. So we work on it. Uh, these are some hoping parameters that uh, one can go through. And we found that indirect hoping will generate both Skitaev and the Heisenberg in this case. And they come with a, a ratio of minus two. And that has something to do with the uh, shape of the easy orbitals. And direct uh, hoping always exists. And that will give us a, a Heisenberg interaction, which is positive. Here, the Heisenberg is negative. Here is a positive. Skitaev is actually an anti pair in this case. So total Hamiltonian is uh, Gitaev, uh, anti, uh, anti ferro Gitaev, and then Heisenberg interaction, which I hope that it's small because uh, they come with the uh, two different signs, but of course in real materials, uh, we, 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 it's hard to tell. Up to the fourth order gamma is uh, in fact zero. So we are looking at these two nice, uh, uh, in an ideal case again. Uh, of course there are other interactions dot, 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 which expect to be small, uh, we have done the ED calculation for the spin one here, and you can see that uh, where Heisenberg again generates the zigzag and anti ferro here, but there is a middle one here that seems to survive the, some kind of disorder state. Before we wrap up, there's a question. There's a, yeah. There's a chat from mm -hmm. Ahmed Salah. Yeah. And uh, Ahmed asks Could you explain how to capture the magnetic interactions in the honeycomb like this specifically? Uh, in both of the anti fer magnetic and the fer magnetic, and what about the zigzag phase and helium chloride? So I, can, I, I don't quite understand. Um, uh, <laughs> explain how to capture the magnetic interactions in the honeycomb lattice um, in both the anti fer magnetic and the fer magnetic phases, and what about the zigzag phase? Uh, so I think that's what I have gone through, like. Uh, you can capture the honeycomb 
that is so uh, magnetic uh, patterns coming from three spin interactions, so three different types, Heisenberg, Gitaev, and Gammas. And uh, in the ruthenium criteria, uh, zigzag order will appear as if I have a ferro Gitaev interaction, empty ferro gamma. In addition, I can add a small ferromagnetic or trigonal distortion generate a small gamma prime, and that will generate the zigzag order. And the magnetic moment angle is even exactly the same as experimentally measured. So many of those theories are rather uh, nice, except that the uh, A-plane field with uh, some disorder state we don't find. Yeah, so you go through that and uh, uh, yeah. So uh, these are some examples of the uh, heavy anions, uh, like um, two minutes. Yeah, two minutes, uh, good. Uh, so I'll just end up with uh, some of those then. Uh, yeah, so this is the uh, spin one triangles and uh, it have a Kitai Heisenberg in triangle lattice. Uh, this is the triangle lattice with the nickel uh, surrounded by heavy anions. The magnetic ordering pattern here will be most likely around the circle, boundary of the circle, uh, because uh, gamma is almost zero. And you can see that Heisenberg interaction with anti ferro case is very unstable towards this so-called G2 phase. And that G2 has a very interesting shape like this. Uh, uh, this is a Ionis's, uh nice paper back in uh, 2016. And the chromium triiodide might be another example where probably a ferromagnetic in interaction is the largest, but the Kitaev interaction might be there, uh, which might be subdominant, second largest, that's what I think. Um, and uh, this one is the uh, single layer uh, 2D ferromagnet. Uh, people have studied a lot about the anisotropy that occurs in the chromium triiodide. And uh, there is uh, some debate over um, the, uh, what the uh, Kitaev interaction is large or not and so on. I just put it this, this is the way I see the material um, when that's how, you know, T2G and EGs and so on. That's uh, my view of uh, when you see these circles. And there are debate over the strengths of Gitaev interaction, but uh, I'll leave that as an open question. I have a few slides, well, more than few, actually. I think I have about six or eight slides, but uh, I don't have time um, you know, how to get it into the estimate, the Gitaev interaction. So. I'll leave um, that uh, five or six slides, uh, probably have to skip it and I'll put it in a summary here. Um, I don't think I have gone through the last part, but uh, that's okay. So uh, we have this discussed or pre I discussed that the uh, role of the non type interactions. In an ideal situation, there are two non type interactions. One is Heisenberg that leads to the magnetic ordering as expected. Uh, on the other hand, uh, there are another non type interaction called uh, gamma interaction. Antiferro gamma near the ferro type, they come different signs, uh, generate the disorder phase under the C-axis. Uh, even without the field, when gamma is large, uh, there is a very disorder state that is occupying large phase space. Even under the magnetic field, they seem to survive much better than the Gitaev. Uh, in this in this uh, in this range of the parameter space. Second, as I said, the, under the in-plane magnetic field, we found a zigzag uh, uh, transition to a classical polarized state. Of course, this is not completely polarized due to the gamma interaction. We'll see a partially polarized. Okay? It's not going to be everything is like spin one immediately. Gamma interaction makes the magnetic ordering a uh, magnetic uh, size of moment will become a one in a very, very large field. So it's a partially polarized in the experimental situation, but they are diabetically connected to the polarized state. I, so I just call it the polarized state. Um, okay. And then out of planes, uh, it's a disorder state appears before you polarize. So we think that's an interesting direction. Higher spin type interactions can be generated uh, if you have a combination of a Huns coupling at the transition metal. On the other hand, spin over coupling in the ligand, which surround the transition metals. So we can use out of this spin over coupling and generate the uh, Kitaev interaction in a higher spin models or higher spin systems. The one that I have not uh, been able to touch uh, due to the time limit was the proposal to estimate the Kitaev interactions for uh, general spins. Uh, um, I really want to talk about this, but it's okay. It's uh, I, I don't even have a paper yet. These are my proposal, which will be written up soon. Uh, you apply the magnetic field in a certain plane. This is called BC plane. Um, instead of AC, you apply anyone who is an experimentalist. So please, you know, if you're interested, please talk to me. Apply the magnetic field in the BC plane. Uh, B is along the bone direction and then plane. 
measure the skin excitations uh, at uh, two momenta of M1 and M3. These are related by broken meter symmetry. So meter is broken due to the uh, ligand. Uh, so these are the symmetry of the lattice. And symmetry of lattice is reflected in the symmetry of the hoping parameter that are allowed. The hoping parameter fix my pseudo spin exchange interactions. So these are all, I cannot change anything out of this. And there are two momenta, these are related by broken symmetry. And you will see that uh, this uh, extensions that are M1 and M3 will be different if there is a Kitaev interaction. So this is a strong uh, proposal. I think it's a very, it's a one example here, for example. Uh, these are the uh, brilliant zone, which do I have any brilliant zone here? Yeah, here is a better example. So here's my brilliant zone here, M1 and M3. These two are related by broken meter of the BC plane. And uh, this excitation energy and that excitation energy is different. If I have a field in the BC plane with the angle of some finite angle of the setup, don't put it in the C axis, not in the A axis. One has to break the C3. So you have to put it in a certain angle with the angle of the setup. And this change between the two, energy difference between the two, measures the kita F minus the gamma, actually measures the K minus gamma. But higher spin case is even nicer because gamma interaction is almost to zero. Therefore, this difference will immediately tell us the kita F interaction. So that's my last proposal. Yes, that's my last proposal. And uh, I will leave this summary here. And then thank you for your attention. There are two uh, additional questions on the chat. Uh, is there any other simulative state in a generalized Kitaev model that can be solved exactly? And can you please explain a little about the effects of on site anisotropy in the spin wave point half system? Okay, good. Yeah, so there are exactly solvable models uh, other than the Kitaev interaction. For example, the one that appears uh, like <laughs> Yao Li model, for example, in that case, uh, uh, one can have exactly solvable, um, then, but it's kind of rediscovered the type because it's SU2 symmetric version of the type interaction. But in any case, there are other uh, uh, models that are exactly solvable. Most of them are a bit artificial to my mind because they include the six spin interactions uh, and so on. It's not just a quadratic. So it's difficult to realize probably in the actual system, but theoretically it's a beautiful, beautiful theories. So yes, they do. And the, the other question about the higher spins, yes, there is a single ion on isotropy that becomes finite, which become constant because as something square in spin half, but bigger than half, there is a single ion on isotropy, which is going to affect the in-plane and out of plane, uh, in-plane, out of plane on isotropy. Uh, that will be responsible for the in and out of plane and the G factor difference because gamma is now almost negligible. But this experiment that I propose is independent of the single ion on isotropy. Yeah, because single ion on isotropy is a local, so it doesn't depend on the broken meter symmetry that I'm using. Unfortunately, I didn't have a chance to go through this, but uh, yeah, but it, it's there. And it's, 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 negligible. it's not negligible in a spin bigger than half. But you need a trigonal distortion to generate the single ion on isotropy. So, but in real material, they are always present. Okay, if there are no further questions, let's yeah. that question. Okay, yeah. go. Yeah, that question. Yeah, here, go, go ahead. A real life question. Okay, go ahead. Effect of phonons. Can you repeat the question? Yeah, so the question is what is the effect of phonons? Brilliant question. Um, it's uh, very important because whenever we have a strong spin orbit couple, again, spin is coupled to orbital. Orbital is fixed in the lattice. So the spin orbit, spin lattice coupling, I think it's important. Um, and uh, well, and that probably you can look at the Raman sketching and so on, have to see that. Of course, how important in what sense is, I, I'm not sure because I know it's there, it's very important. Whether that is important to destroy the spin liquid or not, I am not very sure about that. Yeah, the, 
Yeah, spin over coupling is atomic yeah, spin over coupling. Please. Yeah. So the repeat the question. Uh, what type of spin over coupling uh, I, am I using? Is that like intrinsic, uh, like a rush bar or something? You said right? Yeah. Yeah, so Rashba spin over coupling, for example, it's going to it's going to be K cross sigma. So you have to break inversion to get the Rashba spin over coupling. You can derive the Rashba spin over coupling with the atomic spin over coupling, which is a local site, uh, lambda L dot S, angular momentum and spin, just like hydrogen atoms. You can think about, of course, they're very small, but it's a local <clears throat> atomic spin over coupling. If you add an inversion symmetry broken, you can, in fact, uh, uh, derive the rice was you know recoupling so we are not going that far we are actually even fundamentally before that we have just atomic spin of recoupling that occurs in the at the transition metal uh, together with the Huns coupling that photo j effective hub or you have atomic spin of recoupling of which is present uh, at the uh, heavy ligand which on anions so we are just using our most simple spin of recoupling One more question coming up. So <clears throat> regarding the X phase, the X phase mm -hmm. okay, yeah. with the gamma and the Kita Yev. So um, you, you find the phases using exact dimensionalization. Mm -hmm. Okay. So up to 18 sites. Yeah. So up it could to 24 site. Okay, up to 24 mm -hmm. site. It could be that this X phase cannot commensurate with a 24 site. Uh, that's a very good question again. But uh, we have, uh, yeah, so okay, once. Question. Okay, so question was uh, for online people. Question was that this X phase that I call disordered was found using a, a finite size cluster, which is a 24 site. So if I have a magnetic order, which are not in commensurate with a lattice, uh, you may miss it. And I think it's an excellent question. Um, so the earlier study that we did was a 24 site ED, but then there are other studies uh, which are in infinite tensor product state. And that one is, uh, uh, I believe, going definitely beyond the 24 site. And they do still find the this called pneumatic paramagnet. And yeah, so that I would say more um, confident than the uh, 24 site. <laughs> Any more questions? We can have more questions, but bear in mind, it will reduce your coffee time. <laughs> <laughs> I think maybe we'll hold it and we will reconvene in 18 minutes for Andre Chupakov's talk. Thank, thank, thank you. you. Very nice.